What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I'm excited to show you guys how we can take any image and make it a PBR material. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Now to get started, I'm actually gonna go outside, take my own photographs with my phone. And then from there, I'm gonna bring it into Photoshop, but you can use any application that you might have. We're not gonna be doing anything too crazy here. Basically what I wanna do is I wanna make my image a square image, and then I'm just gonna add some curves to it as well. Now it's important to make it a square image because we wanna make this tileable in the end. So if you have something obscure in your resolution, it might come out a little bit weird. So just good point there, make it a square image and you should be all set. Now that I have saved out my PNG, I have materialized open in which this program is absolutely free. So I'll leave a link down in the description below in case you guys want to follow along and try it out for yourselves. But to get started, this is the basic UI right here. And so if you come down here in the lower right hand corner, left click on controls, it basically gives you all the controls and everything, but it should be pretty intuitive if you used any type of application like Cinema 4D or Unreal Engine. Now to get started with any type of material, it always starts with the diffuse map in which we do have that in the upper left hand corner. And so if I come over here, first off, these little icons right here, this stands for paste, this is copy, this is open, and this is save but we're mostly going to mess with this open button right here and diffuse. I never really seen a point in these other options right here, but I'm just going to click on O for open. Then I'm going to go to my desktop where I have my PNG file and then I'm going to click select like so. Now I have my brick ground from outside inside of this box right here. And let's say that we wanted to see it on a different shape. We didn't want to see it like inside of this little square canvas here. You can always come over here to where it says show full materials. And then if I look down here in the bottom left, we can actually have it on a cube. We can have it on a cylinder and we can also have it on a sphere as well. So whatever shape you want to look at whenever you're working on your material, any of these will be suffice. And I know it looks a little bit weird right here. Like nothing is aligning up at the very end. I'll show you how we can make this a 100% tileable texture. And so to get started, I'm actually going to come back over here to diffuse map. I'm going to click on edit and we can see right here in the lower left hand corner, we have our attributes for our diffuse. Now, where it says Diffuse Reveal Slider, if I slide this over to the left, this is actually going to be our edit from all these attributes down here. And if I slide it over to the right, this is going to be our original image right there. So it kind of shows you in contrast what you're working with. So let me actually slide this over a little bit more so we can see what we're going to be doing here on the right hand side. Now, a good tip for taking a photograph when you want to use it as a material is you want to try to make sure that your lighting is as even as possible. You want to have as little shadow in there and you want to have as little highlights in there as well. You want to just make it completely diffused and dim. But even if you didn't get the perfect photo, we do have some options in the attribute here that will help us out. So the first thing I usually look at is right down here where it says remove shadow. So if I slide this over to the right, you can see that it's completely removing the shadow there, which makes it look a little bit awkward. So I'm just going to move this over a tad bit, maybe just around 0.2, somewhere around there. Now the rule of thumb is you pretty much want to remove a lot of the shadow because you want your shadows to actually come from your lighting inside your 3D program. So if you're using like Cinema 4D or Unreal Engine, all your lighting and how everything reacts to the lighting you want to have within your 3d applications lighting and not have it baked into your material so that's why it gives you the option to completely take the shadows out but i still leave a little bit in there but just because it makes it look a lot more natural now we do have these options right here to remove light as well so if i slide this over to the right you can see how it's manipulating our imagery here but i'm not going to do anything with that i'm just going to slide this one all the way over and I think I'm pretty happy with this right here. So I'm just going to come down here to set as diffuse. And now this is going to be our diffuse material. Now the next step from here, we want to go over to our height map. And this is going to be used for your displacement. Now we don't have a lot of displacement inside this brick pattern, but we still want to make a height map just so that we can have our lighting inside of our 3D program correctly bounce off our object there. So if I come over here to height map and I click create, you can see that we have a grayscale image here. And this is going to represent our displacement map. Now, rule of thumb is anything that's in the blacks is going to be further in depth inside your 3D object. And anything that's white is actually going to raise above. And then the grayscale is going to fill out everything in between. So this is where we could go in the attributes and kind of fill that out to our desired effect. Now, if I come over here to where we have these sliders, you can come down here first and look at these contrast equalizer where we have some weird defaults here. I don't know anybody that uses these ones here. Usually you want to come up here to where it says frequency weight equalizer and hit displace. And this is going to give us the displacement map that we're used to seeing. 
now if you want to come down here and hit final contrast just to kind of bump it up a little bit more you can always have the option to do so but for this brick pattern we might want to make it a little bit more diffuse because if you look right here it's starting to get really black and that means it's going to really dip into our 3d texture in which i could just show you guys right now so just for example's sake let me come down here to set his height map and then if i come over here to show full material let me put this on a cube and let me start to scroll this around you can see how the displacement is really starting to manipulate our object there and so this is going to be where that black area is right here that's not really how our brick's going to be so you can always come back over here to create and you can just start messing with these attributes a little bit more like so so maybe something around there we can always mess with the equalizer as well if we just want to make something a little bit more finite maybe something like this but you do want to make it a little bit blurry in there so let me roll with something like this hit set as height map come back over here check it out and that's not so bad right there so i think that's looking pretty good for our material so let's move on to our normal maps from here so i'm going to come over here click create under normal map now this should look really familiar to you this is your typical normal map here so again we do have some attributes over here on the left hand side we can make it smooth crisp or we could just roll with the mids, which that's going to be pretty much suffice for what we want. Maybe something around there. So I'm going to set this as normal map like so. And then if you desired, if you have like a metallic map or a smoothness map or an edge map, you would just go through the same exact steps. But I'm just going to go over to the ambient occlusion to add some shadows in here. So I'm going to come over here to AO map, hit create. And this is basically going to give us our ambient occlusion map in which I'm just going to set this one as AO map. And we should be good to go from there. Now I'm going to go back over to the height map because I did miss a step right there. So if I click create up here in the top left hand corner, we can actually make a diffuse from our original image and not the one that we manipulated inside of our diffuse map. So if I go to original diffuse is actually going to make a diffuse map from the original photo that we had before we start manipulating it. So I just want to show you guys the options right there and what the differences are just in case you want to set that or you can even make a diffuse map from your normal map but more than likely you're going to use one of these two as your options now before we save everything out we want to make this a tileable texture so that we can use it in our 3d program so you want to come over here to where it says tile maps and once you click on this you can actually see it's starting to blend it in a little bit over here and on our left hand side we can actually control the fall off even more but before i do that i'm going to make this a 4k texture so 4096 by 4096 then if I control this edge fall off, you can actually see right here, we're starting to try to blend that in a little bit. If you come up here to the top right of our attributes panel where it says technique splat, if you click on this, this is actually going to give us a different way to try to like blend this material in. For this particular pattern, since everything is working perpendicularly, you probably don't want to use the splat. So we're just going to use the technique overlap and we're just going to try to overlap this as much as possible to make it as smooth as possible here. So maybe something along these lines right here. Let me blend the edge fall off a little bit more. And you can see right here and right here where we have our mask kind of tiling and everything. And if you want to test it, if you come down here to where it says tiling test variables and texture tiling, if I just slide this over to the right, you can see if it's giving us a good texture pattern right there, in which I think this one is decent. Let me actually move this over a little bit like so. So maybe something like that so that's looking pretty good right there so i'm going to take my texture tile back down to one and then i'm going to set this one as map and then if i come back over here to show full material let's come down to a cube and let's see how it's looking so it's not looking that bad right there and if you want to see what it looks like in different lighting situations if you select right here where it says next cube map it's going to give us different lighting situations just so we could kind of see how everything is reacting to the lighting and the shadows and all that. And I think that texture is not looking bad. So the next step from here is basically we're just going to save this out now. So if you come up here in the top right hand corner where it says saving options, we have a bunch of different file formats that we could choose from. We have a BMP, a JPEG, a PNG, a target file or a TIFF. And I think everything's going to be 8-bit. We don't have any options to select a 16 or 32-bit depth maps, but we're just going to work with what we have. So we're going to select PNG. At least that's what I usually select. And I'm going to come down here to say project. 
and then I'm going to select this folder that I already have made called brick material. And for my file name, I'm going to name this one brick material as well. And once I go into my folder, you can see we have everything like so. So we have our ambient occlusion material. We have two different diffuses depending on which, like this one is built off the original. And then this is built off the attributes that we selected. This is going to be our height map. And then this is going to be your normal map. Now I'm going to show you guys a tip how we can actually use Quixel Bridge to bring all these different maps into Quixel and have it automatically distribute to any 3D program that we want. And if you don't have Quixel Bridge already, all you have to do is go to Quixel.com and then you would come over here to where it says products and you come down here to bridge and it's absolutely free. All you have to do is click download bridge and you're all set to go. So once we have Quixel Bridge open, it's as easy as going up to the top left here where it says file, import assets. And I'm going to select the folder. I already have it selected right here. I'm going to select my folder. And this is going to bring up our import settings window. So for the name, it already selected the name from our folder there. You can make tags if you want. For types, we want to make sure it's a surface because that's what we're going to be using. You can select a different category if you want. I'm just going to leave this one blank. Resolution, it automatically knows that we're working with a 4K texture. And then surface size, I'm just going to leave it at default right here. And then if I scroll down, you can see that it started filling in all the slots from the materials that it recognized. So it already filled in our ambient occlusion, our diffuse material, our normal map. The only thing that we're probably going to have to fill in is our displacement map right here. So I'm just going to check mark this on. And then right here, that's going to be our height map. So I'm going to click open and everything should be good to go. So I'm going to click on import like so. And now you can see that it imported it into Quixel Bridge. Now, if I come over here to the left hand side where we have this little monitor, if I select this and I select on import it, you'll see this is where we can find our imported materials. So this is one that I did earlier and this is the one that we just did right now. But if I left click on it, you can see down here in the lower right hand corner, this is where we can actually export it to our different DCCs. So if I select this right here where we have these little three little sliders right here and I go over here to export settings, you can see that we have export target Cinema 4D, but we also have Unreal Engine's not going to work unless you use an Unreal Engine 4 because Quixel Bridge is built in an Unreal Engine 5. And so this functionality is not going to be able to be used for that, but we can always use it for 3D Max, Maya, Blender, Houdini, of course, Cinema 4D, and many more. So all you would have to do is select your DCC from here. And then if I go back, you would just click on export and then it should automatically build out the material inside your 3D program of choice. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. This is a free program I just discovered not too long ago, but I can find it being really useful if I go out, take my own photographs and I want to make my own material off them. So I'm not just using the same assets that everybody else is using. So if you are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care.